It's good. Man, it's awesome to see everybody. Got a, got a nice group this morning, and y'all just bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and ready for church this morning. Sun's out, ready for summer. So I just got a few announcements here. We do have, um, y'all hang around, we're going to have lunch after church. We got sandwiches and all different types of sides and things like that. So um, we also have uh, this week, don't forget about our Wednesday night Bible study. We've been going through the book of Revelation, um, chapter by chapter. We'll be in chapter four this week, Lord willing. And, um, you know, you don't want to miss that. We're going through it and it's a, it's a good time to go through the book of Revelation in the times that we live in. Don't forget, um, April 9th would be the men's ministry at 9 a.m. with Glory and Fire Ministry, 8804 National Turnpike, Louisville, Kentucky. If you happen to need a ride or something like that, just reach out to one of us men and we can try to get you there. Amen. If you want to go, I think it's going to be a great time, a great time of fellowship. Uh, we definitely need that as men and, you know, and the women. We've got to have that fellowship time. Uh, we've got April 17th will be our resurrection service. We'll have food and fellowship after that. And we're going to have a, a little Easter egg hunt for the kids. Amen. We'll have May 1st, we're going to have our baptism service. So um, what I have, I, I went ahead and put the list back there. If, if, if you want to be baptized, new convert, there's a list back there. Just sign your name on it so we can get you certificates um, for that. Don't forget about April 23rd. It is our youth rally from 2 to 5 p.m. right here. It's the first one that I, that I, can, I know, the first one we've done here. And uh, so we're excited about that. We got that out to all the churches. So we're believing to have a, a, a nice time of just worship and fellowship in the Lord uh, with our youth. So, and um, I know it's Brother Barry Netherland. He'll be preaching it. Um, our worship team will be doing the music. Darren will be cooking outside. So it's going to be a great time that day to spend with the youth. Um, the donuts for the youth, are we still doing that or is that done? Okay, that's done. Okay, no. Okay. So we've got that. Yeah, thanks for everybody that donated to, to help our youth. Um, don't forget about April 25th. We've got Brother Darren speaking. So just keep that in mind. Um, he'll be there on vacation this week with the spring break and all that stuff. Uh, don't forget about um, April 30th. The end of this month, it'll be the last Saturday of the month. Uh, deliverance and Demons the boot camp we're having here i wouldn't miss it if i were you we're going to do a uh, we're going to teach on it I'll, i will have manuals i'm going to put together some manuals so if you're going to be here and you want a manual i need to know because i'm only making enough manuals for those that are going to be here and there's a sign up sheet back there for that so if you don't sign up or let me know or somehow uh, i'm gonna I'll, i may have a few extra manuals but I've been making a little bit more than we should, so if you just let me know, I'll get you a manual when we get them printed out. Um, and then remember, tithes and offerings in the back, if you want to tithe to our church here and, and to what's, what's going on, we, we thank you for that. God's good. It's a good time. Listen, we, we, we uh, give God our resources and let Him use them, and He blesses us. Amen. He protects us and uh, keeps us from the famines. And that's all I have. Is, I don't think, Brother Jeremy, you have anything? Amen. God's good. Looks like we got everybody in here. And, uh, praise the Lord. We'll get our, get our worship team up here and, and let's have some worship. Amen. Amen. Give God some praise in the house this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, church. May sound a little bit different. Obviously, Darren's not here, so bear with us. But we're really here just to praise the Lord and, and to give him all of our, our worthy and, our, and all of our intention. Let's stand up and join together. We worship the God who was, we worship the God who is, we worship the God who evermore will be. 
He opened the prison doors. He parted the raging sea. My God, He holds a victory. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. Don't be afraid to join along. We shout out your praise. Yes, Lord. We sing to the God who heals. We sing to the God who saves. We sing to the God who always makes a way. Because he hung up on that cross. Then he rose up from that grave. My God still rolling stones away. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. We won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. We are the beggars. Now we're royalty. We were the prisoners. Now we're running free. We are forgiven, accepted, redeemed by his grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. We were the beggars. We were the prisoners, now we're running free. We were forgiven, accepted, redeemed by His grace. Let the house of the Lord sing praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. And we won't be quiet. We shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place. Quiet. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. There is joy in this house. There is joy in this house. We shout out your praise. We shout out your praise. a deacon in Jerusalem they dragged him out those city gates to try and quiet him when Stephen preached those Pharisees started throwing stones before he died he raised his eyes and saw Jesus on the throne said you can bury the workmen but the work will go on you can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the Spirit's moving, His will will be done. You can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. James was sent to heaven at the edge of Herod's sword. And Peter, he was crucified like his beloved Lord. Yeah, the Roman Coliseum, 
The lions and the fires. The gates of hell did not prevail. They fanned those flames higher because you can bury the workmen. But the work will go on. You can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the spirit's moving, his will will be done. You can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. And then they lowered Jesus, they laid him in a grave. They thought that it was over, that his name would fade away. But Jesus wasn't listening, no, he rose to life again. Cause God is not persuaded by the arrogance of man. So you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. You can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the Spirit's moving, His will will be done. And you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. And you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. And you can silence the voices, but you can't stop the song. When the Spirit's moving, His will will be done. You can bury the workmen and the work will go on. Yeah, you can bury the workmen, but the work will go on. Just don't get it right Well, I talk the talk But I don't walk And miss the moments Right before my eyes Somebody with a hurt That I could have helped Somebody with a hand That I could have helped When I just can't see past myself Oh, let me be a little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me. saved who I used to be. Thank you, Lord. But even at my best, I must confess, I still need help to see the way you see. Somebody with a hurt that I could have helped, somebody with a hand that I could have helped, when I just can't see past myself, Lord, help me be. A little more like mercy, a little more like grace, a little more like kindness, goodness, love and faith. A little more like patience, a little more like peace, a little more like Jesus, a little less like me.
Jesus, a little less like me. Everybody knows this one, so sing along. Done. I'm done. Done with who we said I was. Free. I'm free. He don't have a hold on me. No, I'm not gonna cower, I'm not gonna flinch, I'm not gonna run from this. I will stand my ground, ain't no way I'm backing down. When that devil comes around, I'm gonna stand my ground. shake these bones I will stand my ground ain't no way I'm backing down when that devil comes around I'm gonna stand my ground I will stand my ground ain't no white flag waving now when that fire in our soul today. Amen. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire God, I'm running for your heart I'm running for your heart Till I am a soul on fire Lord, I'm longing for your ways I'm waiting for the day When I am a soul on soul on fire Lord restore the joy I had I have wandered bring me back when this darkness lead me through until all I see is you God I'm running for 
for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day. Till I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Oh, let me burn for you again. Let me return to you again. And Lord, I want to ask all the children to come down this morning. We're going to pray over them before we get started. Amen, brother. Yes. Have you hang up here with us? Have you hang up here with us? Yes, we pray. Don't you think it's important we pray over our little ones? Look at it. What's up? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Let's just bow our heads in prayer. Father, we thank you for these precious little kids here, Lord. Our children, Lord, we ask you to bless them this morning, God, as they go down and, and learn and, and learn about you, Lord, God, as Miss Vanessa teaches them, Lord. We just pray for the unity, Lord, in our children, Lord, God, that we just keep the enemy out, Lord. Keep them out of their minds, Lord. Uh, and just, Lord, we just cover them in the blood of Jesus this morning. Your blessing, keep your anointing on them, God. Use them mighty in this generation, Lord, God. We give you all the praise, God, for everything that you're doing, Lord. Continue, Lord, we ask you to, to bless Miss Vanessa and whoever helps her this morning, God. Just give her, continue to give her the wisdom, Lord. She is a gift and a blessing to these children, Lord, God. We thank you for her, God. We ask you to bless her, Lord, and bless our children this morning, Lord. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, Lord. As the enemy comes in and brings his flood, Lord, God, you will put up a standard against them, Lord. And we thank you for this, God. We ask you to keep your hands, keep them in your hands, Lord, this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. 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 Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you, you going to preach with me this morning, I guess? Say amen. Say amen. <laughs> we got, we got one. He, he, he's ready for the boat. He said, I see the boat. I see the boat this morning. <laughs> He said, I see the boat this morning. He sees the boat this morning. Actually, I'll just put it up here. Hallelujah. Get all situated here. Don't knock anything around. Hopefully, I don't fall over it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to see everybody this morning. We had a few more come in. And 
just like to welcome our visitors this morning. How many visitors we got? The first time visitors? One? Okay. Amen. We'd like to welcome our visitors this morning. Give God some praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want you to keep the Thompson family in your prayers too. They lost a loved one. Uh, Miss Brenda lost her grandson Thursday night. Um, how old was he? 18, 19 years old? 20. Yeah. It's just, uh, listen, the battle's real. Folks, that's why we do what we do. And, um, this year we've just lost, me personally, people that I know, just too many young people, you know. Um, just giving over the things of the world. They get caught up in stuff. and um, Just great kids, they just get caught up in bad situations, you know. And there's many of us here can can probably testify to that, you know. Um, I'm just here by the grace of God. There's many nights I should have been dead, the things I was doing. So, um, glory to God that we're still here. And, and let your life now, that, that your grace has been on, on you, let your life now shine for Jesus. Amen. Make your life count for something. Amen. And uh, it's that time. It's that time to rise up. It's time for the saints to rise up. And I believe that's what's going to be um, my message this morning. It's time to get in the river. It's time to get in the river. And I'll be preaching out of Ezekiel 47 this morning. So like I said, just keep the Thompson family in your prayers this week. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just a horrible thing. Just heartbroken over it. Um, and you know, the thing about it is they're in church this morning. And they're praising God. Amen. That, that says a lot. That says a lot. When you can stand up here and you lose, you know, uh, they've lost their nephews, their cousin, their grandchild, and, and, they, and, they, and they come up here and praise God. Um, it, 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 speaks, it speaks loud this morning. You know, you gotta you gotta praise him on a. It's easy to praise him when we're on the mountain, but we gotta praise him in the valley too. That's how we get through. Amen. Amen. We gotta praise him in the valley. So let's just open up and pray this morning, Father. We just, Lord, we thank you. We come to you humbly this morning, God. Lord, I ask you to help me this morning with the word that you've given me, and Lord, just just help us, guide us into your river, and help us stay in your river, Lord. And God, we give you the praise and glory. Just move me out of the way this morning. Let you be magnified and glorified. Lord, if there be any, any, any lost in here this morning, we ask you to, to save them, Father. If there be any that's away from you this morning, God, we ask you to pull them back in to, to yourself, Lord. And God, we always give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So we're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and read here in Ezekiel 47. Let's see what the Word of the Lord says this morning. Amen. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple, and there was water flowing from underneath the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east. The water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around on the outside to the outer gateway that faces the east. And there was water running out of the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured out, he measured 1,000 cubits and brought me through the waters. The water came up to my ankle, say, ankle deep. We're in ankle deep right now. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. Amen. So, look, we ain't going to stop at our knees. We're going to keep going. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through. The water came up to my waist. Come on, getting deeper. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross, for the water was too deep. And I don't know about you, that's where I want to be. I want to be where it's just too deep. Or listen, there's only one way in, and you ain't coming out. When God gets you in his river, amen, amen. we want to be in over our head in God this morning. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. When I returned along the bank of the river were many trees on one, on one side and another. Then he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley, and enters the sea. When it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. Come on, it's flowing waters this morning. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because the waters go there. For they will be healed and everything will live wherever the river goes. It shall be that fishermen will stand by it from En Gedi to En Iglam. They will be places for spreading their nets. Their fish will be of the same kinds in the fish of the great sea, exceedingly many. He said exceedingly many. But its swamps and marshes will not be healed. They will be given over to salt. 
along the bank of the river on the side, and that will grow all kinds of trees used for their leaves, will not wither, and their fruit will not fail. Amen. I want that water. They will bear fruit every month because their water flows from the sanctuary. Their fruit will be for food and their leaves for medicine. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. So we see here this morning, what Ezekiel was talking about, the Jews have been taken into captivity by, Babylonia, uh, by the Babylonians. Um, so they were in dry times and intense situations. They had been taken into the captivity. Um, Ezekiel was born in Jerusalem, but he was taken in captivity by Babylon. The temple had been torn down, and the city was in ruins. So their temple had been torn, um, and a lot of it was from... the. Uh, Ezekiel was a priest in Jerusalem, but now he was a prophet in Babylon. So God raised him up to speak to him and speak to him and through him is what was going on. Uh, The Jewish people were weeping because they had lost everything. They weren't they weren't weeping because they lost the presence of God and the power of God in the temple. They were weeping because they lost everything. They were they were more concerned about their stuff than they were the presence of God. So they had lost his presence and his anointing there in dry times, and God begins to speak to them about a river. What had happened, they had got into sin. They had turned their, uh, they had turned their back on God. They had turned their back away from God, and that caused them to go into captivity. And that's what happens with us. That's what Satan will do to us. When we begin to get away from God, and we start to play back into things of the world, Satan will pull us into captivity. But see, they were just more concerned about their stuff than they was about God's temple. But even in that time, God's grace and mercy was telling Ezekiel, say, you know what? I know that the temple's been torn down, and I know that, that it looks like it's all destruction, but there's still hope. There's going to, one day, there'll be water flowing from my temple again. Amen? So you might be in a situation today that you're away from God. You said, you know what? God's saying, you can, listen, you can flow in God's river this morning. Amen. He said there's still hope. There's still water can flow from the presence of God. Now we are those vessels. Amen. But what he was talking about is the, the latter days when Jerusalem began to prosper again. There'll be his water, his healing water will flow from Jerusalem again. And if you read back about 10 chapters, we see Ezekiel begin to prophesy over the dry bones. See, God always has a man to speak a voice to call things to prophesy about these things. And he was using Ezekiel for that. So even though it looked bad, God was saying there's still hope. Amen. And that might be your situation today. Sometimes things look bad, but there's still hope today. Um, and, and we see about, um, and, and you know, we've preached on oil. We've preached on fire. We've preached on the dove. And water is also a representation of the Holy Spirit, of God's Spirit flowing. Amen. So we see here, Acts 2.38 through, um, actually it's just Acts 2.38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So we see here where we, we, we do a water baptism for the remission of sins. It's an outward showing of what's going on on the inside. That's the water's represented here. And we also see it in Exodus 3.17 um, through 20. It says here, the Lord said to Moses, you shall also make a basin of bronze with its stand of bronze for washing. You shall put it between the tent of the meeting and the altar, and you shall put water in it. Verse 19, with which Aaron and his sons shall wash their hands and their feet when they go into the tent of meeting. So it's a cleansing, it's a purifying. Or when they come near the altar to to minister, to burn, to burn a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash with water so they may not die. We need to be washed with God's watering of His Word. The Bible talks about that. So we see here, God is telling Isaiah about this river. We see that we know river, bring, the, the river of God brings life. It brings healing. He's talked about all these things that it's bringing here. And the first thing it says, it was to his ankles, next to his knees, and then to last to his waist. He was uh, waist and last it was too deep. Um, I don't know about you this morning, but I want to go into the deep. A lot of times we like to stay where it's comfortable. We like to stay in our ankles and knee deep in the kiddie pool of Christianity. But God is calling us this morning into the deep. And I had a dream. It was was sometime last year. I had it written down. I I meant to bring it this morning. But I'm going to share a couple dreams with you that I've had. One of them was, um, I I think this is the most recent one. God was showing me 
Because um, I'm, I'm one of those what you call a dreamer. God shows me things in dreams. I don't know why he does, but listen, he, sp- he might speak to you in different. It doesn't make me any more special. You've got the same Holy Spirit that I've got. Amen. So it's just the way that, that he communicates with me. And so I try to write those things down. And a lot of times I've been starting to see those things come to pass over the years. And uh, one of them was me and my wife were driving around. It was right in the area, Woodsdale area, where we live at. And we began to drive. And all of a sudden, the, the river began to rise. The, the, the flooding began to come in. So we would drive down a road, and we, couldn't, we had to turn around. And so we were trying to find our... We would drive down to another road. It was flooding, and the water was still rising. And it got to a point where there was nowhere to go. And we were overtaken by that flood water, and bam, I woke up. God said, I'm sending my flood. He said, you ain't, nobody's going to be able to run from it. They're going to know exactly what it is. Amen. God is going to send his, the last days outpouring, he's going to flood. Amen. He said, I'm going to flood my people. I'm going I'm to pour out my glory in my sanctuary, and that's what we're seeing here. Amen. Amen. So we want to see here, we don't want to live in the kiddie pool of Christianity. We want to step into the deep things of God. We want to step into the deeper things of God. I want to get in over my head. So I believe God is preparing His people for the flood of His Spirit. As the world gets spiritually darker, God's people will shine brighter. Everybody says, well, it's dark. Well, the darker it gets, the brighter we need to shine. Amen? We're supposed to shine like lights in there. So the darker it is, the brighter we're going to be. Because that light shines in us, the light of Jesus Christ. See, Joel 2.23 talks about it. So before we can have a flood, we need to have a rain. Amen. And I believe God wants to rain down on some people this morning. Amen. And we see that in Joel. See, we go on over to Joel, the prophet Joel. He speaks about it too, about there being a, a latter rain. He said, Joel 2.23, he said, Be glad then, your children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for He has given you the former rain faithfully. And He will cause the rain to come down f- for you the former rain, and the latter rain in the first month. So we had the former rain, now we're into the latter rain. Why? Because there's a great harvest right now. The, the, the earth is fruitful. The earth is full of people. Now is the time for the Spirit to be poured out. But now He needs laborers for the harvest. He's trying to raise up some laborers for the harvest. He said, look, the harvest is right. He said, I've got, I'm giving you my Spirit. I'm going to pour it out. But you're going to have to step out amen. into the river. Amen. See, I just don't want to get in the river. I want the river in me. Amen. Come, on. Come on, somebody. I don't want to just get in the river. I want the river in me. See, we got these, we got these type of Christians today that you got some that, that are watching everybody swim, and you got some that are just, they're, they're in the boats. They're just floating by, and everybody else is swimming. We're praising, and we're getting in the water. We're getting in the things of God. It's time to quit floating around and get in. Get in over your head. Quit sitting on the riverbank, amen? Get on in there. So the last days, a rain will cause a great flood. It will cause the multitudes to get swept in God's kingdom. And we see that. But at the same time, but see, we go back to Joel 2.28, says this. It says, Then it shall come to pass, and afterwards, that I will pour out of my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. I thought, man, I must be getting old because I'm dreaming dreams. I said, I didn't think I was old yet. Amen. But he said, your young men shall see visions. Amen. If there's ever a time we need God's Spirit poured out, is now. It's now. We need it now. I'm just trying to get my foundation laid here on this message. But at the same time, God says, I'll be pouring out in the last days my Spirit upon all flesh. But at the same time, Satan's coming in with his flood. We've seen how a wonderful family in our church has lost a child a grandchild, a nephew, because of, a, of, a, of, a, of Satan's flood. They got caught up in the wrong water. They got caught up in the wrong flood. And we see here, Revelation 20, 15 talks about this. It says, So the serpent spewed out water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. You say, what's, what's Satan spewing out? What does his river look like? He's spewing out the flood of evolution right now. That we came from, from apes or whatever, whatever we, we've evolved. How, how come they say we've evolved, but we're actually morally declining? See, he's spewing out confusion over gender right now. So now we got our young folks, they're confused. They don't know if they're a boy or a girl. What are you talking about? We're devolving. We're going back the other way. We want to be all about science and science, science, science. 
And science proves, listen, when a person dies and they're buried, they identify them by their DNA years and years down the road if they don't have an identification. And through that DNA, it says they're either male or female. But see, we've got a, we've got a spirit, the filth, the flood of Satan that's coming in trying to confuse our young folks. I'm telling you, folks, you better get your kids in God's river. They're being flooded by Satan's river. We see here, he's flooding in with murder. Jefferson County has 17 murders last month. Record high. Every year, every month, it increases. What about thought? Satan's flood? He's got a flood coming in right now. Are we going to sit back and allow it? Or are we going to get in God's river and let God's river get in us? I'm not going to stand and keep on letting our young folks die of drug overdoses. Amen. We can't just sit back and, not, and sit back and let Satan have our children and, and indoctrinate them with their confusion. We see the addiction, pornography, confusion. That's Satan's flood. That's what he does. He comes in and brings it. He floods this earth with filth. Same-sex marriage. He's flooding that into our earth now. It don't take a genius to figure out that a man and a man can't have a baby. They can't be fruitful and multiply, or a woman or a woman. But he's flooding that into our children. This is being, all this stuff is being worldwide accepted. So we're going to sit back and allow Satan's flood to come in, but I come by to tell you, when, when the enemy comes in like a flood, God will raise up a standard against him. He'll raise up some saints. He'll raise up some saints and an army that will stand against him and fight and say, Thus saith the word of God. Amen. And stand up against this nonsense this morning. We can't continue. Listen, what, what river are you in this morning? What flood, what water are you flowing in this morning? I, I thank God that he brought me out of that river. I used to be in the flood of Satan. I used to be in the flood of alcohol and drugs and all that stuff. But one day Jesus showed up in my life and set this captive free, amen, by the power of his blood. Why? Because he's still alive today, saving, healing, and blessing. And I thank God that he took me out of that river of flood of Satan and put me into his river of life, Amen. amen. And life more abundant. Life more abundant. See, we're raising up a generation that has no hope. We're, we're raising up they have no hope. All they see is Satan's flood. They don't know truth. They, right here. Jesus says we, got to, we need a generation that will stand up and rescue them out of the flood. Rescue our young people out of the flood. Get them out of the river. Throw the, life, throw the life saver to them and pull them out and pull them into God's river. Flowing from His sanctuary. I remember a time when I was young, and I don't remember my age. I know I was, I was probably three or four. I don't know. I was, I was really young. And I was swimming. I was like a lot of kids. You know, you always want to get a little deeper. But thing, the problem is, I took my floaties off. And my mom was sitting right there. And I began to step down off the steps in this in-ground pool of the apartments we lived at. Step by step. Down there, and it was up to about my neck. And I took that last step, and I was watching my mom. About that time that I took that step, she jumped up off her lawn chair and come and rescued me out. Saved my life from drowning. And then 15, 20 years, she had to do it again, but spiritually. I got caught up in Satan's flood. I got caught up in his devices. I got caught up in his drugs and his alcohol and all that stuff. And then she came to my rescue again. Matter of fact, she had three kids that was caught up in the flood of this, of this world. I'm telling you, don't you give up on your kids. Throw that life ring out to them, amen. She come up in there and snatched us out of hell. Snatched our feet out of the fire. Wait, how are you talking about? By prayer. She began to get into church and pray to Jesus. Lord, save my children. Pull them out of this filth. Pull them out of this flood that Satan's got them in. And she did. She prayed and Jesus took us up out of that flood, out of that filth, and put us up in his river. And now we have life. What am I talking about this morning? Jesus is the lifesaver, and we need to get out and tell people. Let me tell you something, parents. Don't give up on your children. 
Don't give up on your children. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a child. I'm a product of prayer standing before you. There was no good thing in me one time. But Jesus showed up. Because I had people that would pray. I had people that would stand in and intercede, say, hell, you ain't having, I know you're in that filth. I know, see your kids, it might look bad right now. They might be caught up in some stuff right now. But I'm telling you, if you'll pray and you'll fast, God will save your children. He'll put you in the river and he'll, he'll listen, they'll be overflowing. They won't just be ankle deep. They'll be in over their head. They ain't going to be able to get out. They ain't going to be able to get out. Why? Because I serve a God that saves. My Jesus saves. Amen. There's still hope for this generation. There's still hope for this people. But we've got to have people that will rescue. We've got to have lifesavers in there this morning that will rescue people out and bring them out of the, the flood of hell this morning. We not only need to be the river, we need to get the river in us. We need to get in over our heads. Quit playing church. Quit playing church. Showing up whenever you feel like. Get in church, get involved, get, get your feet, get in over your head, amen? Because it might be you. People don't realize, people are watching, your children and your family are watching you. They're watching how you live your Christian life. If you're ankle deep playing around, you're playing with sin over here and you're doing this over here, they're seeing that. They're going to see that. You are their witness. It needs to be real in your life. You need to be involved in God's kingdom. Take the gifts that God gives you and use them for His glory. That's what rescues them. Dedicated. Be dedicated. So we see that. We have a general. We need, we need the oil. We need the fire. We need the water. We need the truth. Get them out of that. That's what will get them out of the Satan's flood of this generation. He's, it's everywhere. It's on the billboards. It's on television. Everywhere. He's flooded us with filth. But in the midst of that time, God's raising up a standard. Amen? So I've got a couple little things I want to talk about in this. And, and through, when the enemy comes in like a flood, see, have you ever seen lifeguard Christians? Lifeguard Christians? They come in there when you start getting a little deep and are... What, what are you shouting for? How come you're saying hallelujah so loud? Sit down, I can't see. Don't you know we're in a Baptist church? You ain't supposed to lift your hands and shout. And I'm telling you this morning, I'm going to lift my hands and shout. Because I want to get in the deep river of God this morning. Amen. I want to get in over my head. I'm going to shout. I'm going to praise till I get my breakthrough. I'm going to praise till he heals me. I'm going to praise till my children are in church. I'm going to praise. I'm going to swim in his river till I get everything that he's given to me this morning. Lifeguard Christians. What's he doing with that boat in here? What's he doing with those props? He can't use that stuff. Listen, folks, if you think I use the props to be funny or to be, to be entertaining, I don't. Listen, I'm, I'm a very simple guy. I'm, I'm like part hillbilly and part redneck. So I call it a hill neck. I'm, I'm very simple. I, I was just, that's just how I am. I have, to, I have to have things to apply to the message so you'll learn them. That's why, that's why I do this. If, you, if, you can, if, you can, if I can apply things to the message, you'll remember that when you see a boat or you see a life ring or you hear a whistle. It's good. I, I've learned that over the years. I can't do that with every message. So this is all for the glory of God. It's not to be entertaining. Amen. It's so you can learn and you can grow and it'll stick with you. You've got something that sticks with you. Amen. That's the only reason why I do it. See, the water goes down in the valley and enters into a sea. Has, has anybody ever heard of the Dead Sea? It's kind of like right in Jerusalem. So I'm, I'm going to use a couple examples here. They call it dead for a reason. And see, the Bible says, he said, I'm going to flood the seas and, and they're going to come to life. But I'm going to tell you the sea, the Dead Sea, that's not going to come to life. It's a salty body of water. It's 9.6 times saltier than the ocean. It makes swimming like floating. So you get in the Dead Sea, it's like you float. Full of minerals, full of salt. They use it for certain things. Plants and animals cannot flourish there. Uh, Egyptians, listen to this. When I read it, Egyptians use it for mummification. Come on, the Dead Sea. The surface area, is, the surface area now is 234 square miles. And in 1920, it was 410 square miles. It's shrunk almost in half since in 100 years. But listen, here's the problem with it. 
It has multiple sources coming in, but nothing going out. I'm going to say it one more time. It's got multiple sources flooding in, but nothing coming out. How many of y'all know Dead Sea Christians? They just everything, take everything they can get. Take, 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 take. Gimme, give gimme, give my name's Jimmy. Sorry if your name's Jimmy this morning. They take, 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 take. They flood in. They're, they're, getting, they're getting things flooded into them. Blessings, getting flooded by blessings. All the things God is just pouring into them and using people and resources to do it. And they never pour out. They become a dead sea. So you got, all, you got the inflow, but there's no outflow. Dead Sea Christians. We got the inflow, but we don't have the outflow. So we got all these blessings sitting there. He wants us to be a reservoir. God, if, listen, if He gets it to you, He wants to get it through you. And it's something I learned as a new Christian. When God began to pour into me, and I had a pastor pouring into me and began to bless me, I began to be a blessing to others. I wanted to pour out, I wanted to give back to others what God had done for me. He saved me. He redeemed me. He healed me. He fixed my marriage. He restored my life. So I want to take that and help others with that. Amen. See, we ain't supposed to be Dead Sea Christians. We just take what we can get and keep it all to ourselves. No, we're supposed to pour back out. When God sets us up on that rock, when He puts us up on that feet on the rock of Jesus Christ, He wants us to pour out. He wants us to pour out into others. Not to be a Dead Sea because that's what happens. They went from, it went from 420 square feet to 210 or 20, whatever it was. Half. Your spiritual life will shrink up if you're not pouring out. Your spiritual man will shrink up if you're not pouring out. You know why God ain't getting money to you? Because He can't get it through you. You know why God ain't getting power to you? Because He can't get it through you. I want more power. I want more money. Use what you got. He's not going to, listen, he's not, he's not pouring it into a Dead Sea Christian. You need to start having some outlets, start opening up, and start being a blessing to others. That'll preach this morning. That'll preach this morning. I don't want to be a mummified Christian. I want to be a river of life. Lord, make, I want to be the riverbed. Let Jesus be the river. Amen. Flow right through me. And that's what's going to happen. You're going to become mummified spiritually if we keep it on up. Ezekiel 47, 11 says this. We're going to get into the swamps. But if swamps and marshes will not be healed, they will be given over to salt. He said, I'm going to heal the seas. I'm going to heal the swamps and marshes. I'm not going to heal. He said, well, what's that? Those are places. See, some of the swamps or marshes at one time used to be a river. Come on, somebody. We got a whole lot of churches sitting around in swamps and marshes. They like their dead religion. They like their dead routine. I ain't got nothing wrong with, with routine religion and all that stuff. You know, uh, the rituals and all that. But I'm telling you, when you leave the power of God out, you're messing up. And I believe we're in a time now that God is visiting His churches. He's visiting those that will allow Him. They will allow the Holy Spirit to come in. They'll allow Him to work. He's visiting those churches. And I believe it was just like time when Jesus walked the earth. See, He come to the Jewish people, but the Jewish people knew Him not. They didn't see Him. They didn't, see, they didn't recognize the king. And see, God's pouring out in, in churches right now, and they're, they're not recognizing the king. They're not recognizing the time of their visitation. The latter rain outpouring, the river is flowing up in this place, and it's going to continue. We're going to see souls saved, bodies get healed. We're going to stay in and continue to swim till we get our breakthrough. Swim till you get your miracle. Swim till you get healed this morning. Somebody shout Hallelujah. So he said the marshes and the swamps ain't going to heal. Marshes and swamps are also on the side of the river. They're the lowlands sometimes on the side of the river. Come on, you got some who are just sitting there. Listen, the river's flowing right through this community, right through this church. You got some just they're sitting over in the marshes. Now oh, we like our religion. We don't want to get too happy when we come to church. We don't want to clap our hands or nothing when we want to come to church. We don't want to shout hallelujah when we come. I tell you, I come in here to make the devil mad this morning. God, listen, the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. Come to his gates with thanksgiving and praise this morning. So I just like to give him some, some, some praise this morning and make the devil mad. He hates the name of hallelujah. Amen. The devil hates when we shout hallelujah. He hates when we shout hallelujah. 
Because we got what he used to have, amen. We get to praise God. He hates it when we praise God. I like to praise God. I like to shout. I like to get happy. I don't, listen, when I come to a church, I don't want to come to, a, to like a cemetery. I don't want to come to a funeral home. I want somewhere where life is flowing. I want somewhere where people's excited. I like to clap because I remember what he brought me out of. I like to shout and praise because I remember when I was a dead, when, when I was dead into my sin and trespasses, into the flood of Satan, and he pulled me out and put me in his river, amen. Dipped me in his anointing, dipped me in his fire, set me on fire for the glory of God this morning. He wants to do the same thing to you this morning. God don't make ponds, he makes rivers. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit now. He said, I ain't dwelling in temples made with, with man's hands. There's nothing holy about this sanctuary right here. The only thing holy is it, and me and you in here this morning, if you're born again. We are the vessels. We are the vessels. He wants to cleanse you up by the washing of the water of His Word and set you apart for His glory so you can be separated unto Himself to be a bright light in this world. But see, there's too much of a mixture now. You can't tell who's Christian, who's worldly, because they act the same. But he says, he said, when it reaches a sea, its waters will be healed. Here's another dream I had. Man, this guy dreams a lot, but I've got to share this one because these two go together. So, when I was younger, where I lived at, my Uncle Lee had a big property behind us that lined up on the Salt River. So, right next to that river was a pond. And ever so often, when you know, you know the Salt River, it rises up, it would flood that pond. It would flood it. This was same, same, a different dream sometime last year. God had showed me, and it, was, and it was just me there, but I could hear a voice. I knew somebody was there with me in this dream, but it was like plain as day. So I'm looking at my Uncle Lee's pond. It was similar, just like that. And I'm looking, at, and, and it was dried up. The pond was starting to dry. There's just a little bit of water in it. And the fish were sick. Some of them, you could see the bones. You could see spots on them. And he said, get these fish over in that river. He said, get my people over into the river. Get them out of these dead ponds. People are spiritually dying. He said, get them over. Take them to the river, and I'm here with you. And I come by to tell somebody, there's some people that's going to the river this morning. You might be in a dead pond this morning. You might be in a dead situation. But God says, I'm going to take you to the river where life flows this morning. Amen. And I said, glory to God. So that's what it has to be. He said, get my people out of the dead ponds into the river. Get them into the river. And it took me a little while to interpret that and realize what he was saying. But this all, it all lines up. It all lines like up. Nothing, there's nothing special about me. I got the same Holy Spirit you got. Amen. God speaks to people different ways. I just, I, I really don't pay attention a lot. So that's where I think God speaks to me in dreams more than just talking to me. Like, because sometimes, or, or with signs, because I just don't pay attention. So he spe he'll speak to me through dreams. Ezekiel 47, 9 said this, And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. Did you hear that? Wherever this river goes, every living thing will live. There will be a gr very great multitude of fish because these waters go there for they will be healed. Wherever these waters go will be healed. Wherever you go with the power and the life of God, people will be healed. They'll be blessed. You'll bring life to their situation this morning. Be that river. They will be on everything, will live wherever the river goes. I don't know what you, but I need the river flowing in my life. Wherever it goes, I need to be in the river, and I need the river being me flowing this morning. I'm staying in the river. Wherever God's river flows, every living thing will live. And it says all kinds of fish. You know what that means? All kinds of different colors. I come by to tell you there ain't a black church, there ain't a white church, there ain't a yellow church, there ain't a red church. There is a church of Jesus Christ this morning, amen? Listen, color's only skin deep, amen? We all bleed blood. Listen, we're all under the same blood of Jesus. We are a church in a body. There's no separation in the church of Jesus Christ. There's no separation in the body of Christ. And as I close this morning, Revelation 22.1 says this, and he showed me a pure river of water of life.
clear as a crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and from the Lamb. God wants to pour His glory out on this generation. Right from His throne room, right from heaven, right now, just like Joel said and Ike said, in the last days I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. He'll use children. He'll use elderly. He'll use black, white, yellow, red. He'll use women, men. It doesn't matter. He said, I'll pour my Spirit out upon all flesh. Folks, we have a dying generation right now they're being swept in by satan's flood and it's going to be up to us right here in this little church to decide if we're going to stand up and push against this or we're just going to stand back and be silent because i'm going to tell you what's happening in the church our silence has been our compromise when they sit and they cram all this stuff, you, you, can't, you can't pray in school. You can't have the Ten Commandments. But they cram transgender and sexuality down their throats. We got a problem. Houston, we got a problem this morning. But it's going to take you and I to stand up and be bold and be willing to be persecuted to say, you know what, this ain't right. Because you know what they call you when you stand up against it? Bigots. And that's okay. They call you haters or whatever. whatever. See, now, now we're, the, we're the bad ones and we, got, we serve a living God. We've been brought up out of the depths of hell, some of us. And we can stand up and say, this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says. It doesn't even make sense what they're doing. You've got a Supreme Court right now that can't figure out what the definition of a woman is. That, that's, these are the people that's leading our country. Don't you think we need to stand up and fight? Don't you think we need to stand up and speak and say, we're not putting up with it anymore? I'm not. I'm not putting up with it. It's our children's future. I don't know how the Lord can return at any time. All the signs are here. Everything's been fulfilled. He can return at any minute. Amen. He can return at any minute. And we have to decide now what we're going to do. We might have another 20, 30 years. If we do, guess what? Our, our grandchildren and children are going to be involved in this. It's time to get busy. It's time to stand up. It's time to get filled with the river and let the river flow out of you. Because I'm telling you, when people have an encounter with Jesus, it changes their life. When they have an encounter with the Spirit of God, when the life is flowing out of you, they'll know it. They'll know it. We are those, we are those temples and we are those vessels. With everybody standing this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anybody here this morning with every head bowed and says, I don't know Jesus. Listen, I, Satan is spewing out on me, but I want to get in God's river this morning. Is that you? Quickly raise your hand. We want to pray for you. Is there anybody here that says, I want to get in God's river this morning? I'm get, I want to get in God's river this morning. Quickly raise your hand. Amen. Amen. As, as they sing, go ahead. I'm going, to, I'm going to pray for you all this morning. I'm going to pray for everybody. Father, we, just, we thank you this morning, Lord. I just ask you, if you want God's river just to fill you up this morning, will you raise your hands this morning? Let me pray for you. Raise your hands this morning. God, I ask you to fill those vessels this morning to overflowing with your spirit, with your power, with your glory. We rebuke all the works of the enemy right now. Right now, I command confusion to leave in the name of Jesus. I command anxiety to leave in the name of Jesus. Right now, I command that spirit of heaviness to lift off somebody right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I ask you to fill them to overflowing right now. Here's Any pain in bodies right now, I just command pain to leave bodies right now. Shoulders be healed. Backs be healed. Speak knees be healed at the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Here's my heart, Lord. Lord, we ask you to fill us with your peace this morning. Here's fill us to overflowing, God. We want to be in that river. Fill us with your river this morning, God. Head to toe right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Pour out your spirit. Lord, we, we want more of you this morning, God. We don't want to be ankle deep in your river this morning, God. We want to be all the way in, God. Bring me in over my head this morning, Father. I don't want to come out, Lord. Make me just rely on you only when I'm over my head, Lord. I want to trust you only, God, this morning. You only this morning. I ask you to come down if you, want, if you need to pray or, or you need prayer. We can pray with you and for you. I am here.